Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton once again has revealed who he really is. Uh, now, this was uh, in a recent interview with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Cotton called slavery a necessary evil. So now let me put it in context, right? Because that's the thing that Tom Cotton or any of his defenders is going to be like, no, yeah, you take it out of my context. All right. So on Thursday, Tom Cotton introduced legislation to stop the use of federal funds to teach something called the 1619 Project. So what is that? Like if you listen to Fox News, it's like some conservative uh, or some, you know, concerted effort to destroy American history and make us, you know, America seem like it's a racist hellhole. Not true, actually. So now the 1619 Project was basically developed by the New York Times back in 2019 with the goal of reexamining the legacy of slavery in the United States. Now, it argues against the notion that the history of the United States began in 1776, but in 1619, when the first transatlantic slave ships entered North America. So basically saying that the transatlantic slave trade and the history of African chattel slavery were actually a large historical factor in the creation of the United States. So where's the lie, right? And, and obviously, this, this is a lot more nuance, I think, than Tom Cotton is accustomed to. But... Let's try to figure it out, right? So now the wealth derived from enslaved free labor in the colonies was actually a big factor in America and the South. In fact, uh, it, it's a big factor in leading up to the creation of things like the Electoral College, for example, right? Where slave owning states, they realized that, well, if their black populations were counted in the census as full human beings or given electoral rights in order to vote, that they would be at a massive disadvantage in a direct democracy. And so instead, that was given to electors. Part of the Electoral College was one of those things that was a compromise by the northern abolitionist states uh, that preferred a direct democracy. So there's that, right? Not only that, but you, look, you've still got uh, impacts uh, of the legacy of slavery that are are instilled today. In fact, the modern police officer, right, is actually an offshoot of or a direct descendant of the slave patrols. Their main mission was to go and catch runaway slaves. And our police forces developed from that. Uh, and they still seem to have some sort of a thing. Uh, no, all right. But anyway, Tom Cotton, however, would disagree with all that and call it a liberal plot. Uh, in his legislation, which is ironically called the Saving American History Act of 2020, would prohibit the use of federal funds to teach the 1619 Project by K-12 through schools or school districts. Now, why is that? Well, Cotton says, the entire premise of the New York Times factually historically flawed of the 1619 Project is that America is at root a systemically racist country to the core and irredeemable. Well, that's like your opinion, man. That sounds less of like a, oh, man, uh, this is a concrete reason why we should not send uh, funding for this project. And more of a, I don't like this. It, it's bad. Okay. Uh, he also said, and by the way, it's a false assertion, but we'll get to that. He said, I reject that root and branch. America is a great and noble country founded on the proposition that all mankind is created equal. We've always struggled to live up on that promise. Well, at least he admits that. Uh, but no country has ever done more to achieve it. What about other countries that outlawed slavery before we did? Do, do they just not count? He added, we have to study the history of slavery and its role and impact in the development of our country because otherwise we can't understand our country. Okay. As the founding father said, it was the necessary evil upon which the union was built, but the union was built in a way, as Abraham Lincoln said, to put slavery on the course to its ultimate extinction. Uh, but actually, no, that's not necessarily how that played out. Okay. This seems like he's trying to whitewash this, the, the history of this country. So now, for one thing, the 1619 Project doesn't say what he thinks it's saying. Is America's founding deeply rooted in racism? Yeah, it kind of is. Uh, but that doesn't mean the country is irredeemable. In fact, when you realize that fact, 
and you own up to it, that's the first steps to basically fixing those inequalities and redeeming that past. I mean, for example, right, look at Germany. Look at how Germany has dealt with and reconciled with its past when it comes to history of, of Nazism, right? They don't have statues of Heinrich Himmler, uh, you know, uh, Adolf Hitler or Erwin Rommel or any of those guys, right? But in America, we've got statues of Robert E. Lee, Jefferson Davis, and of course, military bases named after Confederate generals like John Bell Hood. Isn't anybody else find that a little strange? Again, these guys fought on the side of let's keep people as slaves, as human property. And yet Tom Cotton's over here like, you know, necessary evil. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, the, the whole – look, the whole thing about slavery, right, is that this was just a way to justify white wealthy people, landowners – it was a way to justify their exploitation of free black labor so that they can, of course, reap the benefits of that labor. That's what slavery was to them. It was free labor. And they, to justify this, used ridiculously false bullshit reasons to excuse it. And then when a lot of people, especially after the revolution, that's when the abolitionists really started to push the issue, said, look, we can't have this anymore. We cannot. We're supposed to be founded on freedom and democracy, but, you know, we're not doing that, obviously. Maybe we should do something about it, that. These people are the same ones that said, oh, no, we're going to try to secede from America and create our own country in order to preserve this institution. And that's what Tom Cotton is doing. He's trying to excuse it. And what he's trying to do is, is to preserve this childlike, whitewashed view of history where our founders were essentially infallible, at least that there were uh, these amazing, wonderful people and they have very little faults except for that little thing over there. But let's not forget about that, right? Let's just forget this. Let's just move on from that. Let's not forget. Uh, let's not Let's not deal with that. No, in reality, the founding fathers are pretty complex people. They had good and bad traits and beliefs. On the one hand, of course, they were the product of the Enlightenment. Uh, and brought a lot of that to the United States uh, in, in the founding of the United States. But uh, on the other hand, they also, some of them were brutal slave owners. Yeah. So you know these people are not perfect. And like anyone, and, and they shouldn't be, and this is the problem, right? They shouldn't be revered blindly. Their contributions to creating this nation should absolutely be learned about and, and studied and even respected, Right. But their history and the bad stuff that they've done shouldn't be erased in order to line up with somebody's narrative. And this is the real reason Tom Cotton doesn't want the schools to teach this, right? Because once you realize the reality of chattel slavery and how prevalent and how big of an impact it had on the founding of this country and the effects that it still has today, you would want to challenge that system. You would just want to. A system that has disadvantages for black people and advantages for white people that were baked in. Look, it, it may not be it, – it's not our fault, not my fault that it's baked into that system before I was born. But it certainly is on me to do something about it. <laughs> I mean we have a justice system right now where black people are arrested more often and punished more harshly than white people for the same crimes. The over-policing – uh, of minority areas, of course, leading to more arrests. Uh, you also have the shootings of unarmed black men that are disproportionately high for their population. You have other things, uh, discrimination when it comes to hiring. You had the practice of redlining. And you also have the racist stereotypes against black people and, and welfare. Basically, this information runs counter to the narrative and the policy positions of people like Tom Cotton, who want to chuck out all the nuance of the past and only paint and venerate the founders like you would a religious figure, like modern-day Jesus, right? Which makes sense if you know Tom Cotton. Okay. So now this got some pushback here from uh, Nicole Hannah-Jones, who was awarded this year's Pulitzer Prize for commentary for her introductory essay to the 1619 Project. She said on Friday that Cotton's bill, quote, 
speaks to the power of journalism more than anything I've ever done in my career. She also tweeted on Sunday that if chattel slavery, heritable, generational, permanent, race-based slavery, where it was legal to rape, torture, and sell human beings for profit, were a necessary evil, as Tom Cotton says, it's hard to imagine what cannot be justified if it is a means to an end. And, and that is the problem, right? Justifying, uh, uh, you know, the means or uh, using the means to justify the end or something. Using the end to justify the means. So, uh, look, she's 100% right, okay? And she added, so the slavery uh, foundational to the union on which it was built or now you heard it from Tom Cotton himself. Uh, so, look, 100%. And, and just imagine what the white kids are going to learn, too. If you actually expose them to that horrific history, then, yeah, it's going to get it's going to get them thinking, going, wait a minute here. There was a time where, you know, I, I couldn't I, I wouldn't be sitting next to the black in the class, but they would be enslaved. That's insane. And it would get people again to want to change that system. Uh, and so, you know, it's it, it's amazing that people like Tom Cotton not only are congressmen but want to just ignore that history just because it's bad. Yeah, it's bad, which is why we actually shouldn't ignore it, which is why we actually should do stuff about it. And so talking about, you know, noble, right? Uh, and th and that's that's this entire thing, this this language, right, used by Cotton and the rest of these people is that, oh, no, uh, the, the United States throughout an entire history has had a noble cause. Not necessarily. I mean, look at right now in the context of now. So noble that we can't give everyone health care in America, that we can't, uh, uh, you know, uh, give everyone clean drinking water which disproportionately, again, affects poor and minority areas, right? Can't even do that. Where a man can make a $13 billion in a single day, while 11 million people face the possibility of being evicted during a pandemic. Once again, the most are affected are minorities. And so you want to talk about noble. We weren't really all that noble then, and really not now. We can do much better in this country, uh, I think, and, and we should absolutely try to do better. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on, and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.